Palestinians evacuate Gaza's main hospital as the fighting expands. Western Navy's increased response to the Houthi danger in the Red Sea. Head of PLC Rashad Al Alimi and the UN envoy Hans Grumberg discuss Yemen Peace Road Map. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News and Me, Shazad Delbe. An Israeli strike on South Lebanon on Monday killed a senior Hezbollah commander. Security sources identified the commander as Wissam at tawil a unit's deputy in the Radwan force. They reported that he and another Hezbollah fighter were killed when their car was hit in a strike on a Lebanese village. Israeli bombing killed more than 130 Hezbollah fighters in southern Lebanon since cross-border shelling began following October 7th. The continuous Israeli bombing on the Gaza Strip killed about 100 people in the past 24 hours. The Ministry of Health stated that 73 people were killed and 99 were transferred to Al-Aqsa Hospital in central Gaza in the past 24 hours. Palestinian television outlets reported that eight people were killed in an Israeli bombing of a house west of Deir al-Balah in the central Gaza Strip. <laughs> The Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Jessim Al Bedewi, and top EU foreign affairs diplomat discussed developments in the situation in Gaza. Al Bedewi stressed the need for unified international efforts to stop the ongoing Israeli attacks against the Gaza Strip and put an end to this humanitarian catastrophe. The meeting also discussed ways to enhance and develop cooperation between the Gulf Cooperation Council and the European Union. For more than 90 days, the Israeli aggression has continued its damaging campaign against Palestinians, affirming to crush Palestinian resistance militants. The Israeli occupation army killed 23,000 and injured 58,000 Palestinians amid a hunting silence from the international community. This report has more details. Marek patients and displaced people are fleeing from the main hospital in central Gaza as the fighting between Israeli forces and Palestinian militants draws closer. Doctors Without Borders and other aid groups withdraw from Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital in Deir al-Balah in recent days, saying it's too dangerous. The escalation of violence is breed panic among people sheltering in the hospital, causing many to join the hundreds of thousands who had fled to the south of the besieged territory. Israel says it has largely wrapped up major operations in northern Gaza and is now focusing on the central region and the southern city of Khan Yunis. The occupation officials have said the fighting will continue for many more months as the army seeks to dismantle Hamas and return scores of hostages taken during the militants group's October 7 attack. The offensive has already killed about 23,000 Palestinians, devastated fast swathes of Gaza Strip, displaced nearly 85% of its populations, numbering about 2.3 million and left quarter of its residents facing starvation. It has also threatened to ignite a wider war with Lebanon's Hezbollah and other Iran-backed militant groups allied with Hamas. This comes while the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is back in the region. The U.S., which has provided crucial military and diplomatic support for the offensive, has called on Israel to take greater measures to spare civilians, but has joined it in rejecting international calls for a ceasefire. The situation is even more dire in the northern Gaza, which Israeli forces cut off from the rest of the territory late October. Entire neighborhoods have been demolished and hundreds of thousands of people have fled, while those who remain face severe shortages of food, water and medical supplies. 2023 has been a year of enormous suffering, violence and climate chaos. Humanity is in pain. Our planet is in peril. 2023 is the hottest year on record. 
People are getting crushed by growing poverty and hunger. Wars are growing in number and ferocity and trust is in short supply. But pointing fingers and pointing guns lead nowhere. Humanity is strongest when we stand together. 2024 must be a year for rebuilding trust and restoring hope. We must come together across divides for shared solutions, for climate action, for economic opportunity and a fairer global financial system that delivers for all. Together, we must stand up against the discrimination and hatred that are poisoning relations between countries and communities. And we must make sure new technologies, such as artificial intelligence, are a force for good. The United Nations will keep rallying the world for peace, sustainable development and human rights. Let us resolve to make 2024 a year of building trust and hope in all that we can accomplish together. I wish you a happy and peaceful new year. The United Kingdom Maritime Trade Operations reported tracking six small boats nearing a commercial ship southeast of the Yemeni port. The authorities stated that it received six small boats which were approaching a commercial ship nearly 50 miles southeast of Mecha in Yemen. According to the Naval Force, weapons were not seen on board small boats and authorities are investigating the incident. The Israeli newspaper Globes reported that the Chinese Costco, the giant of the state-owned shipping, has stopped sailing towards the Israeli ports. The newspaper pointed out that the Chinese company, which is the fourth largest navigation line for containers in the world, contributing about 11% of global trade, has taken this step due to escalations in Bab el Mandab Strait and the Red Sea. Western naval response to the growing danger of Houthi strikes in the Red Sea continued to escalate as three separate nation warships carry out defensive operations to safeguard commercial ships sailing in the region. This report has more details. Western navies are increasing their collective response to the maritime attacks being conducted by Yemeni-based rebels against merchant shipping operating in the southern Red Sea. Four warships from three different navies now appear to have conducted operations to protect commercial ships sailing in the region. The ships are reported to have shot down missiles and uncoded air systems launched from the Yemeni coastline against commercial shipping and other targets. Since mid-November, Houthi rebels have been attempting to seize or strike commercial shipping operating in the southern Red Sea and have fired cruise missiles and uncrewed air systems north of the Red Sea towards Israel. The RN became the latest Western Navy to conduct operations in response. The UK government announced on 16 December that Diamond, whose deployment was announced to participate in the response operation, had fired a Sea Viper missile to take out an uncrewed air system being used to target a merchant ship. As well as countering single round attacks, Western naval ships are also countering attacks involving multiple incoming projectiles. U.S. Central Command said that Kearney had successfully engaged 14 uncrewed air systems that were launched as a drone wave and were assessed to be one-way attack drones and were shot down with no damage to ships in the area. As the threat grows in volume and as the Western naval response grows in return, the United States is assessing the establishment of a Red Sea-based task force to counter the threat under what is being termed Operation Prosperity Guardian. The pressing requirement is being underlined by the fact that several commercial shipping companies have already decided to temporarily reroute shipping south around the Cape of Good Hope. A young man was injured today after an explosion of Houthi planted mine in a Durahimi district south of Hodeida. The 25-year-old young man suffered sharpenal in his head and arms and an amputation of his left leg after the explosion. Throughout the war, the Houthi Musha transformed large areas south of Hodeida into minefields, including civilian homes, government buildings, and infrastructure. Remnants of war and weapon storage claimed the lives of countless civilians in Ma'rib. The most recent of these tragic incidents was the death of four civilian casualties in the city's arms market after a missile exploded in a citizen's home. This report has more details. The phenomenon of civilian deaths due to the remnants of war has become a constantly recurring event in the city of Ma'rib, either due to unauthorized devices and explosives 
or because of storing weapons in homes of the civilians. This phenomenon led to the fall of dozens of victims of civilians. First, I would like to thank Yemen Today Channel for addressing this sensitive and important issue that led to the death of many civilians. Remnants of war, including munitions, mines, and explosive devices, are found in conflict zones and also in other areas that are not in conflict anymore. This poses a great threat on innocent civilians who are not aware of such objects. As a result of the years of war, the phenomenon of illegal arms trade spread, and it also contributed to the occurrence of many victims in tragic incidents. This was caused by explosion incidents resulting from the storage of weapons in homes by arms dealers. A few months ago, the remains of a missile exploded in a citizen's home in Wadi Ubaidah in the city of Ma'rib, resulting in the killing of an entire family. Also a few days ago, a projectile exploded in their breeze, leaving four civilian casualties in addition to dozens of similar incidents. The storage of weapons inside civilian homes is considered a crime and violation of humanity. It has resulted in the killing of many civilians in different areas. The recent incidents in Ma'rib Governorate was tragic, where a citizen was storing weapons in his home that exploded and resulted in the killing of him and his family. Such incidents occur due to a lack of awareness of some citizens about the dangers of storing weapons in homes or tampering with projectiles and explosive objects. Also, the mines planted by the Houthi militia constitute a great danger to the lives of civilians, and they will continue to claim more victims unless official authorities and international organizations make concrete efforts to protect civilians. The Media Center for the Giants Brigade said that it targeted Houthi military convoys coming from Al Baida Governorate towards Bayhan District in Shabwa. The Giants Brigade's artillery managed to hit back against the Houthi reinforcements and destroy their elements. Informed sources have confirmed that the Giants have killed or injured dozens of people in Houthi ranks and devastated their supply of military equipment. The United Nations condemned the killing of its doctor, staff Aqad Al Qaid, with armed bullets in Al Dala. Dr. Aqad Al Qaid, who served for three years in disaster relief, was killed by unknown gunmen. The United Nations expressed its condolences to the family of the victim, calling on authorities to conduct an urgent investigation into this tragic incident. More efforts are being made to reach a permanent solution to the Yemeni crisis. The UN envoy for Yemen, Hans Grumberg, laid out a road map for peace in the country. However, Houthi commitment is needed to realize the UN's plans. This report has more details. The United Nations envoy for Yemen, Hans Grumberg, has laid out a road map for peace in the country, which he says is reliant on solid commitments from internationally recognized government and the Iran-backed Houthis. Grumberg said any peace plan in Yemen would need to be implemented in phases and was also dependent on securing a lasting ceasefire and ensuring the withdrawal of non-Yemeni forces from the country. The non-Yemeni forces include the Arab coalition to restore legitimacy in Yemen, Iran's Scots force which is responsible for foreign operations of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as well as Lebanon's Hezbollah. According to sources, the withdrawal would be connected to implementing and completing the first phase of the peace plan, which would likely take up six months. The United Nations envoy added that one of the main obstacles to a lasting peace was the lack of trust between the warring parties, which he had been seeking to rebuild since taking up his post in August 2021. Gromberg outlined that the goal of the United Nations mediation is a serious political dialogue that clearly gears towards ending the conflict and provides for sustainable peace and delivers the future that Yemen is aspired for, a future of accountable governance, economic development, and equal citizenship. The parties have already committed to working with the United Nations to achieve this goal, stressing his keenness to ensure that the roadmap articulates the parties' clear commitment to a tangible steps towards resuming an inclusive political process that is Yemeni-owned under United Nations auspices.
He also highlighted the need for the Houthis to respect international maritime law and cease its attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. The need for a peaceful resolution to arrest in the south of the country and the importance of youth and female participation in the political process in a post-war Yemen. Coming next in the news. International Organization of Migration says thousands of African migrants arrived in Yemen last year. Welcome back. A recent UN report revealed that a large arrival of African immigrants entered Yemen in December 2023. The organization reported the entry of more than 1,000 migrants to Yemen last December, an increase of 13 percent, which tracked more than 1,000 immigrants. The newly appointed dean of the Houthi-run University of Science and Technology launched weaponary courses and training. An academic source revealed that the university president started a comprehensive military course on weapons training for university students in the Great Hall of the Faculty of Administrative Science. The source pointed out that the duration of the course, according to the announcement, is 10 days of theoretical education, then a closed course in the militia's military sites. A fire erupted in the building of the Ministry of Interior in the interim capital, Adan. Witnesses said that smoke escalated from the offices of the Diwan in Al Arish region in Khur Maskar district. So far, the cause behind the fire outbreak has not been determined, and there are no data on human injuries or material losses. According to a recent report by the UN, about 80% of the population is food insecure and 21.6 million people are in urgent need of assistance. The report estimated that 7 million people in Yemen need mental health support, but only 120,000 have uninterrupted access to these services. Only 46 psychiatrists across the country are available, one for every 700,000 people. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs stated that years of struggle will increase the difficulty of winter challenges. The winter season has deepened living conditions for 900,000 people or 134,000 families in 68 districts across 12 governorates, including the displaced returnees and host communities. The winter response strategy for the shelter sector requires $9.8 million dollars to reach about 81.3 thousand of the most vulnerable families. Here's a reminder of the main headlines. Palestinians evacuate Gaza's main hospital as the fighting expands. Western navies increase response to the Houthi danger in the Red Sea. Head of PLC Rashad Al-Animi and the UN envoy Hans Grumberg discuss Yemen Peace Roadmap. The 
is the end of the news. Thank you for watching.